Hey, hello there. Welcome back to another Advent of Code episode. Uh, today is a very rainy day here in Buenos Aires, but um, so far electricity has stayed uh, working, so we can continue with Advent of Code. And before I forget, I should also put um, a stopwatch. There we go. So, where were we? It is day 16. Awesome. Um, we are one day behind. Maybe today we can catch up to this. So, it looks like, like today we are going to be like almost in like inside the big mountain that... Uh, what did, did we do yesterday? The, was it the lens? Yeah. We focused uh, a beam of light with the lenses. So, today, day 16, the floor will be lava. <laughs> okay. Um, a reference to the floor is lava game. With a beam of light completely focused somewhere, the reindeer leads you deeper still into the lava production facility. At some point, you realize that the steel facility walls have been replaced with cave, and the doorways are just cave, and the floor is cave. And you're pretty sure this is actually just a giant cave. Yeah, that sometimes happens when you, when you start to walk uh, inside long facilities. And look at this, it seems like another grid puzzle. A lot of, lots of grid puzzles so far in, in this advent of code, which I won't complain about. Finally, as you approach what must be the heart of the mountain, you see a bright light in a cavern up ahead. There, you discover that the beam of light you so carefully focused is emerging from the cavern walls closest to the facility and pouring all of its energy into a contraption on the opposite side. Contraption. Upon closer inspection, the contraptions appear to be a flat two-dimensional square grid, awesome, containing empty space, dots, mirrors, uh, slashes, and splitters, which is like pipes. This is very reminiscent of that pipe puzzle um, that we had before, so some flashbacks there, that that puzzle was not easy. Um, and this is already day, day 16, so it might be even harder. Damn. The contraption is aligned so that most of the beams beam bounces around the grid, but each tile on the grid converts some of the beam's light into heat to melt the rock in the cavern. You note the layout of the contraption, your puzzle input, for example, as this. The beam enters in the top left corner from the left and heading to the right. Then its behavior depends on what it encounters as it moves. Okay, so I guess it will bounce around in these uh, diagonal mirrors. And these other things, I don't know, are they sort of walls or will they heat up with a, with a beam of light? If the beam encounters empty space, it continues in the same direction. Okay, easy. If the beam encounters a mirror, the beam is reflected 90 degrees depending on the angle of the mirror. For instance, a rightward moving beam that encounters a forward slash mirror would continue upward in the mirror's column, while a rightward, rightward moving beam that encounters a backward slash mirror would continue downward from the mirror's column. Okay, so that's also quite intuitive. And it's again, it's similar to to, to the logic of the um, of the puzzle in the um, loop of pipes that you also have to like turn ninety degrees. So probably going to use something similar to that. If the beam encounters the pointy end of a splitter, the beam passes through the splitter as if it, the splitter were empty space. For instance. A rightward moving beam that encounters a minus sign splitter would continue in the same direction. Okay. If the beam encounters the flat side of a splitter, the beam is split into two beams. Uh -huh. Going in each of the two directions, the splitter's pointy ends are pointing. For instance, a right rightward moving beam that encounters a pipe splitter would split into two beams, one that continues upward from the splitter column and one that continues downward from the splitter's column. Okay. 
Okay, so that that is the new sort of complexity, I guess. Beams do not interact with other beams. A tile can have many beams passing through it at the same time. A tile is energized if that tile has at least one beam pass through it, uh, reflect into it, in it, or split in it. Okay, so if, if a beam passes through a tile, it's considered energized, and that's important. Why? In the other example, here's how the beam of light bounces around the contraption. So it enters on the top left, going right, then it splits, and I guess if it splits and goes out of bounds, it's like, it, uh, it's just, it's, it's lost, I guess. Then this one goes down, here it splits again, uh, one goes to infinity, and then one, this one bounces, bounces. What is the two? Beams are only shown on empty tiles. Arrows indicate the direction of the beams. Uh, if a tile contains beam moving in multiple directions, the number of distinct directions is shown instead. Okay, so here there are two beams passing through. I guess the one that I was seeing and this other one going down. The number of distinct directions is shown instead here. It's the same diagram, diagram, but instead of only showing whether a tile is energized with hash or not. Okay, so all of these things are energized. Ultimately, in this example, 46 tiles were energized. The light isn't energizing, energizing enough tiles to produce lava. To debug the contraption, you need to start by analyzing the current situation. Hmm. With the beam starting in the top left, uh, heading right, how many tiles end up being energized? And the passive inputs will be, I guess, a pretty big contraption of mirrors. Okay. Hmm, this sentence is pretty suspicious. The light isn't energizing enough tiles to produce lava. So that makes me think that in part two, we're going to have to I don't know, move, move mirrors around and, or do something with this, or like rotate mirrors or splitters to like energize more tiles, which sounds like a very complicated thing, but let's not think ahead and let's try to think about part one. So one thing about part one that I want to see if it happens in the example is, are there any loops? So we were following this, it goes down, then it goes, here it goes right, uh, bounce, bounce, bounce down, here it splits again and splits again. Uh, if we follow this to the left, here it splits again and splits again, and look at that, we, yeah, we encounter the same thing, so yeah, on this splitter we joined with this um, original beam and bouncy bouncy. So there is a loop. There is this loop, at least. And when it bounces to the right here, um, it bounces to the right, uh, downwards goes to um, out of bounds, but the upwards one bounces here, bounces here, goes up bounces here and here, this one goes to the to the right, this one goes down again and out of bounds, but this one goes up and left and then it joins the original one. Okay, so there are at least two uh, loops here that I counted, maybe there are more, but yeah, evidently there can be like loops of light, if that makes any sense. So we have to not f uh, not fall into infinite looping there or infinite recursion or anything. So we gotta detect when we, I guess when we encounter an existing beam going the same direction on the same tile, we can stop there and stop following the beams. Um, because like it doesn't matter how many times it passes through like these twos don't matter how many times it passes through a tile or, or if it is a loop or something like that. Uh, it's just the only thing that matters is if the tile is energized. But 
a single tile can have multiple beams in multiple directions, I guess, up to four directions passing through. Um, okay. Um, so, okay, I think if we go uh, with part one doing the simplest thing possible, shouldn't be that terrible. Let's see. Jump into the code. Um, okay, I have small font size because of the last thumbnail. Let's start as usual with um, mm -hmm. copy nets and plates. Day 16. Oh, how was the name? Uh, the, the floor will be lava. <laughs> lava with. I wrote it with long B. <laughs> lava. Okay. Um, I like how the editor like lags a lot when you just start it up. Uh, was this the name? Will be lava. Yes. Um, great. Let's copy our inputs. This is day 16 and let's close everything else. Our input is going to be this guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, sample input is this. Uh, sample, sample, sample here. And this sample output is 46. Okay. Um, so, first order of matters is do we parse this thing or do we just cheese it and use a tile, a grid of characters? <laughs> um, so far, we have been mostly doing that. And let's actually remember what did we did in the pipe. Yeah, the pipe problem. Uh, I don't know, I don't remember if I refactored this too much. I did add some, some comments. Um, uh, so, some things um, after the, the recording, but yeah, I think the grid though uh, is still consistent, consists of just characters. So it's a vector of vector of characters. Okay. I didn't model the, the enum I did. I do have some enum though. The direction is an enum. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 I am. I am a bit tempted to do a similar approach here. Um, even when we move around. Yeah. This. I don't remember if this. This was the the first. Um, approach that uh, that I did or if I refactored it afterwards after recording the video but I sort of like this thing where you um, see if you can move or what you need to do like depending on the direction you're going and the direction is an enum um, and what tile you encounter it's like okay if you're going up and you find the seven, or and if you're going, or or if you're going down and you encounter a J, you turn left. Sort of thing can uh, probably be useful here too, like to encode this logic. Uh, but one thing, um, one thing that I'm not sure about is um, the use, the use of. Um, Mm -hmm. of, uh, how do you say, um, an enum, an enum for directions, because what I'm thinking of is what if the grid, like we, we're going to have um, the grid of characters that is, um, yeah, the, the contraption itself, or the, what we parse the input into, but I also want to store something else, which is like the energy or no like the, the beam of light the beams of light passing through that uh, tile so we could have like an array of four for instance i don't know an array of four booleans for example um, and uh, each direction could be uh, a number from zero to three and index this thing 
and putting true uh, when there is a beam of light going in that direction. But we can also use an integer for that and just use um, a bit field thing to uh, just mark some bits as the direction. And for that, I wonder, I don't remember, like, I know that you can do something like in um, direction and say something like, okay, up is one and uh, I don't know, left is uh, two. So use um, down is four and right is uh, eight. So each of them can be uh, like a different bit. And then you can, the problem is that I don't think uh, an empty here would be zero, for example. Right, so this would be like the possible directions of the beams. And you can or this into a single number, but that won't be a direction itself. It, it must be like a number. And um, I wonder if Rust does have something like this for enums. So let's say, um, what do I want to Rust uh, enum bit fields? Something like that. Mm -hmm. There surely are external crates for doing that. Bit by bit. <laughs> Ooh. Nasty. But yeah, this, this sort of thing is pretty common. Here is using octal notation for uh, writing these numbers. Mm -hmm. And you see the answer, and the answer, of course, recommends uh, the crates. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, okay, I don't know, I don't know. Because um, this could be one way to go, or the other way is just using constants, and the constants would just be simple numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, I am tempted to, like since, um, since the grid would be um, consistent of characters, like I'm thinking about going either two extremes or you use like you, you do the least modeling possible and say, okay, the, the grid is just um, a two-dimensional vector of a character and let's say, um, I don't know, a, a single byte, you know, a, a byte that um, has the directions um, ORed in together. Um, maybe, I don't know, like a U32, so these things sort of align in 64 bits, whatever, like doesn't matter. Um, but a number and don't model the variations as an enum and, and having these things be constants or going the other uh, the, the other way possible and model the two things and say like uh, this is a tile thing and um, and the direction and the tile thing would be um, you know another enum that would be empty uh, vertical splitter, this kind of mirror or this kind of mirror and, and, and so on. Um, and if we do like a combination of two enums when we move around, I guess, you know, the, the switch statements from Rust can, can check that if we are checking all the possibilities, which would be nice, I guess. Um, like we would get some tooling supports, but also we need to type more and <laughs> Uh, and model things more, like parsing things and things like that. So I am tempted to, let's start with a non-modeling approach and then we'll see. <laughs> um, so yeah, a tile could be this and I guess we could, um, let's mm -hmm, do a multiple Editing here is going to be const. This is uh, upper, no, upper transform to uppercase. Um, 
U32, why not? And look at that. Um, those are sort of the beam directions. And the grid is going to consist of these things. Um, I could put this into a struct, but let's use, just use a tuple for now and see what happens. Um, let's put this here in the top. Okay. Uh, let's parse the input then and say let's grid be a grid. Um, we're going to have, as usual, the input lines, map each line, and then uh, collect. And what are we going to map each line into? Well, um, what we're going to get is characters, map them to something, and then collect. And what are we going to map each character into? Well, just simply to a tuple that says character and empty. So the tiles are not energized at the beginning. That is one possibility. And yeah, that's... This is one possibility, or we could have like the contraption grid as one thing and just having the characters there and then another grid to just having these numbers um, which could be useful because only the the second one we would need uh, to be immutable but let's not overthink this and just do what is the like go this thing in the most simple way possible so what are we going to do then? Um, we have to start with a beam on the top left, moving right, and um, the beams can split, so it's not like I can have a single variable like beam position and beam direction, because when it splits, like, okay, what are you going to do? So, um, what we can have instead is a collection of beams like, to be processed and then process each beam in a loop. So let's say, let's mute beams be uh, just a vector and the starting beam would be on the top left, which would be, um, yeah, we can have an x, y coordinate and a direction, right? So we could say like 0, 0, right, for example. Um, that would be the, the starting beam. Then we are going to loop through each beam and modify the grid. And then we're going to count how many tiles on the grid are energized. And energized means that the second, like the, yeah, this number is non-empty. Non and that's it. I think that's kind of it. So let's say um, a child, no, while we do the usual consumption, like we, we will treat this thing as a stack of beams to be processed. So here we put the first one and then we pop from this. So while um, let's, we can say beam or some beam, where there is some beam to be processed in beams dot pop. We'll do things with this beam. It's like we will do the, um, what we will do with this beam. Yeah, I guess what we can do is follow along this beam, like um, follow its path, and when it splits, instead of like continuing with one and pushing the other one into the beams, we can just put the two on the beams to be processed and forget about the original one. It's like a beam will die when it enters a splitter and two new more beams are going to be born. Somehow like that. Okay. Hmm. 
How are we going to do this then? Let's take a look at the sample. <clears throat> so I guess the first thing is <coughs> sorry. Um, the first thing about moving the beam around would be to try to um, beam is uh, this kind of thing. Fine. Well, the beam is going to have a direction, so yeah, I'm thinking. I, I'm thinking about something like this. Um, we're gonna mark the grid. Um, let's first destructure this beam. So the beam is going to have an x, y coordinates and a direction, right? Uh, this is the beam. Great, and then. That's right. And then and then at some point we are going to like if the grid is in a uh, in a valid direction then we can mark the grid already uh, in the y coordinate and x coordinates we can um, yeah this is in this thing and sort of the second thing on this tuple which is a bit ugly to say like this mm. Mm. no not this this we're gonna mark it with the direction of the beam ugly but we're not just going to assign it we should like or it with this so that if there were other beams in there um, we we don't delete them yeah and before doing so, I think that like the ending condition, like to avoid looping around, we can check if the grid at y x uh, this thing ended with the direction of the beam. So if there is already a beam in that direction um, on that tile on the grid, then um, we can uh, so if this is not zero right is this correct the precedence yes then continue like this um, this grid is going to be entering a loop so okay um don't really like that but 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 we can we can I think we can salvage this by saying something like um, let's what is in a tile there's gonna be a character and tile beams <laughs> uh, tile beam directions <laughs> Is gonna be this this style. So let's destructure this thing to make this. I don't really like accessing tuples like this instead of having names for things. So let's see if this improves things somehow. Um, in here, we yeah, we we're also gonna need to mod modify this. So can we have a mutable reference? I wonder. I wonder. I wonder why, 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 why. why? <laughs> Sorry. Um, tile beam directions. If there is a direction in this thingy, the dereferencing is questionable. Uh, let's let's see what happens. So we modify this thing. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I wonder if for the character, can we just the reference it here? Uh, 
Yeah, it's not that. Uh, well, I don't need the character to be a mutable reference, but that's that's fine. So we mark the first. We check the tile. If there is a, a beam already in that direction, then we don't process this beam any further. So that's the loop uh, detection logic. Then we mark this direction into the tile. Then we should um, advance, right? Depending on what is on this um, tile. So that's that's kind of the, 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 the match logic that we want to do. So let's match the character and the direction. Um, or let's say direction and uh, character, which is kind of the same, of course, but I want to maybe copy a little bit of the logic that we had on pipe maze. Because it's somehow um, somehow similar, right? Um, how we actually have to, we are in this style, we have to move also. <laughs> That's kind of the thing. Uh, we have to do this sort of thing. Sure. But when do we move? Um, uh, if we start, I imagine if the sample had like a slash here, so we, we, we need to process this, I think. We mark it as energized and then um, we may change direction or we may uh, split into, into different uh, things. So, okay. Um, I guess when we Hmm, let's think. Um, uh, this thing inside of here should also, now that I, that I think about it, should, should be a loop. Right? I think so. Um, we start with these, and then we should loop. These things should be mutable. Yes, yes, I think so. Um, because we want to follow along what this thing does. We change direction. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, let's sketch this out. Um, I'm gonna actually loop here. And we are gonna we're gonna mutate these things, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. So, for example, for example, um, if the direction is anything, but we encounter a dot then we should follow in the same direction. That's sort of what I want to say. Uh, what, what does it mean to follow in the same direction? Well, we don't change anything or we add uh, the, the current direction to our x, y coordinates and we move around. But I would like to probably do this, um, like determine the new direction after this and 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 then what then increase that the direction i guess so okay this is not no longer a continue this should actually be a break because we, sh we want to break out of this loop and continue processing the the next beam okay uh, this thing is non exhaustive sure so let's say, okay, this uh, won't change anything. Here, I want to 
uh, change x y according to there. Okay, let's think of the different possibilities then. Um, that one was easy. It's also the same case uh, when we are moving left or right and we encounter um, a horizontal splitter. We need to say that. Um, maybe here we can just list the things that will change direction or will make the beam split. Mm. Right? Can, can maybe do that? Could maybe do that. Um, how are we going to do the splitting? That's an interesting one. So let's think about the splitting. So if we are going uh, right or left actually, um, this is like OCP, left to right is the normal way of saying things. And we encounter a vertical splitter. This is like an interesting case, right? We want to split the pin into two. So we're gonna push into these beams, two new beams. Um, one going upward and one going downward. And So the x should be uh, the same. Then we're going to have y minus 1 for the one going up. And this, I, I need to do bounce checks too. And let's say uh, one is going to be going up and the other one is going to be going down. And then uh, we should break. We should break out of uh, this loop. And yeah, this um, this beam is done. This beam would be done. Now this is this is not uh, safe to do because this will underflow if we go from zero to minus one. So let's actually do a wrapping. Is this what I want? A wrapping. Sub. Um, so it becomes goes out of bounds, I guess. And then if we do this, then we're gonna need to do a bounce check when accessing this grid here. Mm -hmm. Yes. That sounds reasonable instead of checking if it's in bounds here and not pushing it's like this this wouldn't need to worry about that we just wrap around and whatever um yeah that sounds all right to me uh yeah yeah why not so we're gonna do this and we're gonna do a similar thing for um, going up or down and finding one of these. We're gonna do actually sort of the inverse for, for this. So let's do this. So this is going to go this is the left word. Um, yeah, the, the, the left word uh, split, and this is the right word uh, split. Sure. Um, here is where, where it gets interesting. Um, we want to.
get mute why uh, this is not very pretty and then <laughs> row row get mute x uh, right and I don't need to do this probably uh, what are your what is your type oh it should be an option of course of course um, so we need to check here we need to check let's say let tile be this thing and then we can say uh, if let um, <laughs> some these things be the tile else uh, we shall we are out of bounds we break and we are full of errors here so um, no this is let this be or else break sure and these are mutable references, awesome. Still, is, this is basically the same that we were doing before, but with bounds checks. So if we are out of bounds, uh, we break. It means like we have gone out of bounds. So bin has gone out of bounds. And I'm already disliking this, I think. I'm already disliking this. <laughs> because um, I need to also increase no actually actually I'm not this like in this uh, forget about it here I'm going to change X and Y yeah I'm going to just check uh, change X and Y after changing the direction but uh, I'm not going to advance well, yeah, I won't. I will advance here, but I mean, um, I won't access the tile. I will just loop and then access the tile. So yeah, this is maybe not so bad. So okay, um, this is this is the, the splits. Great. Uh, this is the do nothing case. Great. Um, what else do we want to do? I want to do the mirror ref uh, reflection. So if we're going right, for example, and we encounter um, a slash like this then we want to go up right and what other case we have also if we're going left and we find uh, the other slash which I type like this in this case we want to change the direction to move up and what is my syntax error here I'm not seeing it um, A missing comma here, right? Was that it? No, what's getting all <laughs> the syntax highlighting is, is going bonkers here. Uh, what's my what's my mistake here? Request text documents, Rust analyzer, blah blah. Um, let's close it and reopen it. Mm, what's going on? We haven't we haven't. Um, run anything unterminated character literal what is this thing that I type here what's going on oh <laughs> that was a horrible error so the um, Backward slash is used for things like n or things like that, but if you want to actually have a character of backward slash, you need to like double it, which is beautiful, beautiful. Okay, these things will change the direction to be um, upwards, right? That's good, um, and also if we do it the other way around, if we are going right and we encounter this or if we are going left and we encounter this then we go down 
Um, sure. Do we list all of these things? It's like it's it's not a, the um, the most intelligent way of doing this. There surely is a, a better way of thinking about rotations and things like that. But um, I guess I can just um, swing it, <laughs> cheese it with this. So if we're going up and we find this, or if we are going down and we find this, then we are going to go right. And same thing the other way around. If we do this, then we are going to go left and is that it? We are taking care of the mirrors and I think all of the directions that we want to encounter them. We are taking care of these guys and yeah, let's also take care about the splitters when they don't ch change anything. So we're going to have two more patterns. So if we are going flat, no, left or right, and we encounter um, a horizontal splitter, or if we are going up or down and we encounter a vertical pipe splitter, we do nothing. Like, let's say that explicitly. And then, in any other case, uh, I want to fail. I want to say something like, hey, this is an error. Um, formats and say uh, unexpected uh, tile and we're gonna have the character in uh, direction uh, and this is ugly like that because the direction is just a number but that's fine um, this is just for debugging purposes and we want this to float up and propagate and like diverge if this is the case okay so that is like uh, unexpected things uh, handling and now finally we need to update x and y depending on the direction so the thing about having like not modeled the the grid and used just the characters and numbers is that this thing is not exhaustive and we need to handle this. Maybe if we had modeled the grid with uh, an enum for these things and another enum for the directions, maybe Rust would tell us, okay, you have handled all the, all the cases, uh, that's fine, and we will need like an else here. It would be like completely checked and amazing, but well, also will be more code to like parse so <laughs> uh, trade-offs then we want to update x and y and here again we're gonna have the different cases of going up down left or right uh, so let's say if we're going left we're going to do x uh, x wrapping uh, wrapping sub of one. So we want to wrap around and then we're going to check if the thing is in bounds. Great. If we're going right, we're going to do x plus equals one. If we're going to up, we're going to do the same thing but with y. Uh, so y wrapping sub of uh, one. And if we're going down, we're going to do y minus equals 1. And again, if this would be an enum, this would be enough. But since this is just a number, uh, Rust tells us, hey, uh, you are not covering these patterns and some, some ranges. Beautiful thing here. So... <laughs> um, in this case... Uh, we should like this is more even like a panic case um, 
because it means that we have changed the direction to something that we don't expect and it's, it's more like a like a bug this can happen though so I'm, I'm propagating the error up because uh, this depends on the input and it's, it's like a parse like a mix of a logic error and a parsing error because it's like if the um, if the grid would have something else here like I don't know an, an X um, that would trigger this this condition here but this is more like a logic error so I guess uh, we can say unreachable here yeah unreachable with no explanation whatsoever so I think that's it for the logic of the beams actually I think yeah uh, if I'm not missing something important that should be it for the logic of the beams and so what's the the final piece of the puzzle the final piece would be to count how many um, how many tiles have been energized and I'm going to use like a nested for loop which we learned I think it was in yesterday puzzles the lens library was, was this thing well kind of it's an example of this um, we did have like a, we had to add some things up uh, with uh, two nested for loops. It's not a grid, but it's eh, kind of similar. Um, two nested for loops. And first I, I did it with iterators and the code was like double the lines long. Uh, maybe simpler lines, but I think for this and also for this case, I'm just going to use uh, two nested for loops. So let's see. Say let mute. Um, Energized tiles uh, counts <laughs> very explicit, and we're gonna loop for each row uh, in the grid, and then for each um, character which we are not going to use now, and um, what would they, did we call this thing? Beam style, beam, beam directions. Eh. Let's call it tile beams in the row. If the tile uh, in the row, if the tile beams is uh, not zero, then we increase the energized tiles beam count and I think that will be it we, and we are going to print this so print line energized mm -hmm. tile beams tile beams there you know I want to sort of make this the same uh, way here yeah okay let's run it and see if we actually got this somehow right uh, this is the binary day 16 and we are going to supply it with the, in the sample input and let's see if it, this doesn't run without entering uh, an infinite for loop. No, it panicked. Subtract with an overflow. Uh, where did I do that? Oh, yeah, <laughs> because this is wrong. Going down should be increasing the y coordinates. That was a stupid bug. Let's go again. 46, is this what we expected actually? Yes, look at that. <laughs> All right, uh, so we didn't get into like an infinite loop and we actually got the correct answer for the output, the uh, sample input right away or not right away after that uh, stupid minus instead of plus uh, like the typical sign problem. But we also got an answer for the actual input and let's try this answer out and see if we got it right away and we did awesome <laughs> uh, 
That was nice. Uh, it feels it always feels nice when you just uh, spend a bunch of time coding something and not even running it. And it's like just thinking in your head. And then when you run it, it's right the the first time, or I guess the second time because of the stupid panic uh, and the underflow. But that that was it for part one. It was pretty. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, well, not not exactly easy, but um, also it didn't have like surprises. So that's nice. Let's see what part two is about because this can get really gnarly. I think if we need to optimize things or something like that. So as you try to work out what might be wrong, the reindeer tags on your shirt and leads you to a nearby control, pa control panel. There, a collection of buttons lets you align the contraption so that the, beams, the beam enters from any edge tile and heading away from that edge. Any edge tile and heading away from that edge. You can choose either of two directions from the beam, either of two directions for the beam if it starts on a corner. Okay, for instance, if the beam starts in the bottom right corner, uh, bottom right, it can start heading either left or upwards. Okay. So the beam could start on any tile in the top row heading downward, any tile in the bottom row heading upward, any tile in the leftmost column heading right, or any tile in the rightmost column heading left. To produce Lava, you need to find the configuration that energizes as many tiles as possible. In the example above, this can be achieved by starting the beam in the fourth tile from the left in the top row. Sorry, uh, by starting the beam in the fourth tile from the left in the top row. So it starts from here. Using this configuration, 51 tiles are energized. Find the initial beam configuration that energizes the largest number of tiles. How many tiles are energized in that configuration? Wow, this doesn't seem that complicated actually for part two. It might be, uh, it might be inefficient, like it might be slow to compute, but what we need to do is not so complicated. Uh, we just run what we did on part one, but starting from different uh, places and then pick the maximum, and that's it. Um, yeah. That sounds reasonable, I think. So let's try to do it. <laughs> uh, maybe it will be slow, but uh, I don't think so. Uh, like, this were 7,000 tiles, and, um, and the input, uh, so there is 16 inputs, Oh, I closed the solution. I still want to have this, but I, I, I wanted to, to close the, the pipe one. Um, the input is 110 rows by 110 columns. So that is like 10,000 something tiles. And we energized uh, 7,000 of them on part one. So in the order of 10,000 and we want to try out, let's round this to 100, uh, 400 possibilities. So 400 times 10,000 um, is what like 4 million if I didn't do that um, math in my head wrong. So 4 million things that we need to iterate, like in the, that, that, that seems pretty doable. Um, maybe it will take a second or something, but should be doable. So that's awesome. So we're basically going to, going to use the same logic as part one. This is the original grid and... Okay, let's do something. Let's... Um, commit this right away as a part one solution. So add um, day 16 part one solution. 
if this is the non-reviewed solution to part one. So now, for part two, basically I want to extract this, all of this logic and passing the starting grid and the start position and direction for the beam and then uh, do all this thing again. So, yeah, that is, that is what we are going to do. And uh, what it, it will, what this extracted function will return is just the energized tiles account. So let's extract up to here and see what happens. Extract into function. And it's not too terrible of an extraction. Let's grab this function and move it down here. So let's call this thing count energized tiles. This is going to take a grid, but I'm not going to take it um, as a as a mutable thing. Let's take. Yeah, I think I'm going to bite the bullet and just take the input grid. Um, uh, this needs to be a result because we. Um, we, we can fail this because we are doing this sort of error handling but um, this kind of thing but that's fine let's return one of these and uh, yeah we are going to return an okay of this that is fine what are you an i32 I don't know but let's maybe make you um, unsigned why not um, so, okay. Tile beams. Okay. Uh, and now that we are passing this grid as an immutable thing, um, I'm going to have a temporary grid here, like the, the actual, actually immutable thing that we are going to change is going to be the, um, like the beams that that go into each tile. So let's call this thing uh, beams grid. And it's just gonna be a vector of vectors of uh, starting empty. And this is the inner thing. So this is gonna be of width, width and of height, height. And well, this is the height is going to be the grid length and the width, let's just put this everything in here. Beautiful. This is the beans grid. And we're going to do bounce checking here. Um, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, we're going to access the grid. Um, this is going to give me a tile. But the tile is no longer going to be um, like on this grid, tiles are just characters. So let's actually inline this variable and say, hey, if there is some character in here and we don't need to do get mute we don't need to do get mute we can just access um, the character in here sure yes 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 can we even dereference here yes 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 and the tile beams is going to be um, this beams grid in Y and X. So we can take a mutable reference to that, or I guess we can 
now that we know that we are in bounds, this I think should be should be safe to do. Not exactly so because if the input grid is um, not square, I think this this could explode. Like if we are thinking about adversarial inputs, but let's not not think about that. Uh, this should even handle non-square grids because of how we are handling um, width and and height here. So okay, this should be that, and then here we should iterate over the beams grid. Um, this is the beams tile beams. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can do reference here. And this should be the same then as what we did on part one. We're going to pass the initial grids by reference and actually this, um, does it make sense to do this? Let's remove this and let this be inferred. And here we don't need to map the characters to anything. We're just going to collect the characters right away. And it doesn't need to be mutable, of course. Okay. Does this still run? It does. Awesome. And we can have this... Uh, well, we're going to put that into the samples file uh, after we get part two. But we also want the sample output here to be 51 for part two. Okay. So now on to part two. This is um, energized tile count like on, for part one, I guess. And now we're going to do that, but for every possible entry point and direction and get the, the minimum, no, the maximum of those. Um, so let's say um, initial energize style count or even like part one <laughs> energized style count um, initial energized styles and then we're going to get the maximum of them. How do we now? How do we try out all of um, different entry points? Um, we can do sort of a stupid way, which I'm tempted to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Oh, uh, here we need to also pass, sorry. Uh, that was a strong exclamation. Um, beams grid and the beams uh, to process. So this is the initial beam, but I want to parameterize this. So um, here I want to pass in um, start, like start x and y and the direction. So Uh, this thing is no, sorry. The beams are uh, u size coordinates. So let's say uh, start position. Maybe I'm not sure if this makes sense. Uh, now let's just say start x u size start y u size and start there u32 not the previous but it should serve 
And here we start with this start x, start y, and uh, then start there. And we need to pass this now. Uh, we start with at 0, 0 going right. Again, if we run this, we should have the same answer. We do. Now we want to try all the possibilities. So, okay, let's uh, write it in the ugliest way possible. <laughs> what are we going to try? Um, uh, we want to sort of have an iterator um, or iterate over all the columns, for instance, uh, or oh, sorry, all the rows, and starting at x0 and that uh, row and going to the right. That will be, um, yeah, all of the possibilities starting to the right. Um, Okay, and I'm trying to think about this in, in, in an abstract way, but that seems a stupid thing to do. Um, let's do something like, um, yeah, I want to go from zero, zero up to height, we're gonna um, map each of these uh, y coordinates and have uh, 0, this y, and right. Those are all the right, like, right facing starting positions that we could have. And that seems fine to me. Um, this is an iterator of these things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, if we do this, we're going to try all of this, right? We can then map this to count energized tiles. Um, of this thing, sure, but let's write that. And um, write uh, beams. Let's give this thing's name, why not? Height um, is, uh, let's height B with length. Um, we're going to have this and we're going to have left going beams which are going to sort of do the same thing but start at um, the width minus one and the width is going to be the grid zeros, uh, zero length um, and they are going to go left okay and then yeah this seems fine the type of this is Uh, this is interesting how the, the type of this thing is uh, represented here. It's a map iterator for a range uh, iterator and a function that is uh, unnamed because we are using a closure here. Uh, this is just an, it shows us like an input function trait, uh, which is pretty, pretty neat. Uh, and the uh, argument type and the return type. Um, this should be i32 though, it should be, why is it i32? 
uh, because probably what is inferred from um, yeah this zero is probably inferred to be an i32 and fine um, if we have these two things I don't think that we can combine them um, and have something like hey let's have the right uh, beams and the left beams and I don't know why I'm starting with right instead of left let's switch this around um, but anyway we cannot even put them I think in something like this um, let's try it but I think it, this will fail let's grab all the beams and actually um, this is an iterator right so we should like flatten this thing yeah no I don't think that this will work but maybe it will work if we say hey let, let's have the left beams and chain them with the right beams and then chain it and so on with the up and down and then all of these beams we're going to map them and we're gonna have a start x and a start y and a start direction and we are going to call count uh, energized tiles blah 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 for all of these Mm -hmm. and of all of these we're gonna get the uh, maximum and this is gonna be called max energize tiles something like that but the maximum is not gonna work because yeah this is a this is a result so we need to do something about those results uh, let's for now let's just use a filter map here filter map and convert this result to an option and sort of discard the result. Not very pretty, but let's to do uh, propagate results up. Retold result. But this is this is a possibility. We have left beams, the right beams. Then we are going to have the, uh, of course, the up beams, which are going to. Uh, let's think about the um, well, yeah, up beams. We're gonna go this time uh, for each width, and we're gonna advance in the x direction, and we're gonna um, it's the beams that are going to go up, so they will start at the well at the x, and the y here will be height uh, minus one, and these guys are going to start going up. And then we're gonna have the down beams. Same idea, same max, but they're going to start at y zero and going down. Uh huh. And these are not being used because we still want to chain them. Chain, chain, chain. Look at that iterator usage. Chain, chain and down beams and look at that <laughs> look at that amazing amazing and after all of that maxed energized tiles should be an option of u32 and since we just want to get the answer for now let's unwrap this um, here let's print this and see what happens. So before running the actual input, let's run the sample and we got 51, which is what we expected. Awesome. First try for the sample. Let's see if this is gonna be first try for the input. It ran and we got a bigger number than before, but on the same order of magnitude. Let's submit this and it is a golden star. Awesome. Oh man, this felt, felt smooth. <laughs> this was a smooth solve indeed um, this is a bit uh, messy all that we have here but yeah 
it's I mean it's not too bad uh, we do have an answer so let's add an add and if we run the check all we're gonna have an error when we check the answers file but we can copy this and put it in the answers file day 16 we expect these two answers and now we check and it passes awesome okay so code review time um, <clears throat> this is actually I quite like this uh, thing of combining the, um, the the beams here in like a chain iterator we can even call this uh, all starting beams yeah why not um, mm -hmm. I do wonder if like inlining this thing these things uh, can make Probably not, right? Let's inline them and see how it looks. Uh, well, we have chain. I don't like the, the lack of symmetry for the left um, thing. We could uh, try to cheese it with like an empty iterator and then chain with up to here it's like that should also work it's not very pretty but now all of these are sort of symmetrical is there an uh, std iter empty oh yeah there is so let's use it. Empty. Uh, yes. And then chain all of these. Yeah. Instead of having all of them. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like this. This should still work. Yep. Left, right, up, down. Awesome. And then um, we get the maximum. That's fine. We are doing this filter map, which I don't like too much. So what should we do instead? I'd want to silently um, eat errors and yeah, not know about them so um, this max the maximum yeah it needs the thing to To return um, the things should be comparable but yeah I'm pretty sure that the results are not comparable um, I do wonder because I think like you can you can combine things uh, when you do sum for example like sum is, is an interesting one because this guy um, the return of this is this sum trait and different things are like summable and you can actually sum into uh, a result but I don't think this is uh, possible with max there's also like max by Mm -hmm. Great result. Um, um, 
let's see, like, if we do this, what are you complaining? Expected, no, the, um, just keep mapping. Max, the trade balance is not satisfied. Huh? Yeah, the things need to be comparable. But if you do max by uh, key and yeah, if you do max by key, it's it's gonna um, okay. I can extract the um, the okay result of the each guy of each result and compare those um, but the thing is I would like this thing to like fail if we have um, an error so maybe maybe I can do this like yeah I, I, I can probably do this with uh, a for loop and yeah, I, I will be happy with that. So let's say let max uh, energize uh, tiles is gonna be zero beginning. So we're going to consume uh, these iterators manually, and we're gonna say for uh, for what for these things in uh, these. <clears throat> We're gonna do a max energy styles equals max energy style and take the max <laughs> of this and uh, count of blah 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 blah. And this we can short circuits, and that will be it. Okay, if we run with the actual inputs, we get the answers. Um, and this is fine to me, I think. Um, yeah, let's extract this and call it energize tiles. Yeah, energized, energized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is fine. For loops, for loops are nice. Uh, are a nice ways you know, to consume iterators, I think. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with this main uh, logic. Um, am I happy about not having model this thing with an enum? Eh. Yeah, I am quite happy about that too. Um, because we need these things to be different numbers, like different bits. Um, so, so this is fine. Yeah, this is fine. I, I guess I could write these things as um, binary. So two would be this, and four would be these and uh, eight would be these, but I mean, is that any better? Not to me, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Let's keep it as, as that. Uh, we have StarTex and blah, blah, blah. Sure. This is the only place that we are using this. Uh, it doesn't make sense to extract this into a type alias, I think, because we are not reusing it for anything. Um, this is fine. Yeah, this is fine. This is like the starting beam, right? So. I do wonder if it sort of makes sense to call this thing uh, beam <laughs> and make it be um, 
something like this. Start being and just put this guy in here. And it, I think it sort of sort of simplifies uh, parameter passing. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. I thought this was going to collapse this into, oops, into a single line, but I guess it doesn't want to do that because of yeah, it goes uh, beyond um, this column. But um, this is this is fine, right? Doesn't change much, but it's like okay, we we are saying what the bean. Um, actually, the previous variables were a, a, a bit more explicit on, on what each of these things are, so I'm going to revert this to say, like, just take the start x and y and direction and up to there. Okay, yeah. So then we have um, these beams grids, which starts all empty and we could extract this width and height, but no need for that. Um, yeah. Beam goes out of bounds. Let's use like simple present for stuff. No need for fancy conjugations or speaking about the past. Like this is a condition that is just happening right now. Um, we are checking then the beam grid in y x with this. This is this is okay, right? We sort of want to first. We want to check, um, yeah, and early early break. If I guess we could extract all of this loop into like inner loop into a function or something and, and say like okay uh, follow this beam but I think that wouldn't be very useful because we need to mutate the beam screed so you, you we would need to pass that as a mutable reference and also even the beams because these are the beams to be processed and we push things into here um, inside this function so uh, extracting like it's a typical case where maybe all of this function looks a bit gnarly but if you decompose it you still need to understand all the bits and you are just passing mutable state between them and it's not great either so this is fine up to here um, then we match the direction that we are going and the character that we saw that we are at right now on the grid um, if we're going in any direction, yeah, and it's a, it's a dot, or these cases, we just continue the same way, do nothing. Otherwise, we change the right direction when we find the mirror, this is really fine. We can even say, like, reflections and splits. Yeah, why not? Um, it was, I think it was pretty self-evident code, but uh, maybe a comment, it's not, it's not bad. And yeah, here we split into two and we break. And finally we increase, like we move the X and Y coordinates depending on our direction. So, so changing the direction thing to be an enum would make this at least this match be a tiny bit better, uh, but not much else. Like you wouldn't change much else, and it would also need to. Um, here we would need to, to convert the direction into uh, a number in order to like do bit, bitwise operator operations with. With this guy, which because this this thing would need to still store numbers, so um, I think it's we wouldn't we wouldn't save much, changing that to to an enum. 
right? And then we have emptiness. Yeah, no, I think um, I think this is fine. And then we do a good old for loop, nested for loop to count things, which is awesome. We can even do uh, this trick of uh, if tile beams is different to zero, increment by one. Yeah, no, th this is fine. This is fine. I, I, I was meaning to do like not an if here and then do this as bool, no, as um, u32. But I mean, it's not, it's not necessary, right? Uh, you can do this and, and not put this inside an if, and things should still be the same. Um, but this feels like unnecessarily clever. Let's just leave the if condition and a very damp uh, increment here. Right, I think this looks pretty good, and it was actually quite quite a smooth solve today. Uh, we didn't face any complications, I think, uh, just a little, a couple of stupid mistakes, but they were quickly uh, found out, so, or quickly found. Let's commit this and say, um, at day 16, part two, solution. And that will be it um, after we do our little um, thumbnail. So this was day 16 and what did we do in this day? Um, we again have, like this is the second time we have mirrors, right? When, yeah, I think um, we had a previous day that was about mirror reflections. I don't know, I don't remember what I called uh, <laughs> The, the family they're, they're like smoke and mirrors and something, but these are um, I don't know reflecting <laughs> reflecting beams, and we are in the middle of a mountain, like in the heart of a mountain, and it, we are we're talking about reflections. This very much reminds me of Celeste. I think the, um, the episode where you are inside um, the mountain is called Reflections, or maybe it's, I don't remember which one is called Reflections, but it was a very nice um, episode. And <laughs> these colors also reminds me of Celeste. So that's great. Let's show up a little bit of this neat code, especially mm, this, this iterator chaining trick. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit, a bit cheesy, I, I will admit, like the, the way that we are doing this, but mm, it feels nice. It feels nice that you're able to do this kind of thing. Rust is so, like Rust iterators are so damn powerful. I, I love that. So yeah, that was day 16 and it wasn't too complicated and well, let's see what the next days will be about. But for now, that will be it for this video. If you have been, thanks for watching and see you later. Goodbye.